It's Friday night in Dayton, Ohio, and there's danger in the darkness. You can actually see the fire right here. This is a serious blaze. Right there, firefighters are breaking through the windows. There's the fire right here. It's a routine night. Fires, drugs, and crime. I just want you to stay calm and wait for the police to come talk to you. Dayton and surrounding Montgomery County are ground zero in the heroin epidemic. Do you know if it could be an overdose, ma'am? And when you need help? What is your emergency? This is where your 911 call is answered. Sir, do you still see somebody outside of apartment 7? The Montgomery County Regional Dispatch Center. We're going to show you what it's actually like to be a 911 operator. When day turns into night, the operators keep the lights low. Their eyes focused on the four computer screens in front of them. Captain Jay Wheeler oversees the always busy control room. The phone system has two different screens. One is for the actual phone system, and the other one is the mapping software that we have that goes along with the phone. And then the other screens are the computer-assisted uh, dispatch program that we have running. This screen shows a series of standard questions the operators ask. But trust us, these people are ready for anything. I don't want to live. Why? Because my family beats me. I mean, it's not a reason to end everything. I mean... Yes, it is. That dispatcher talked the suicidal woman out of killing herself. They hone their skills with on-the-job training, and all are certified in emergency medical response. Is she clammy? Is she having cold sweats? Reading from a scripted series of statements, they reassure the caller help is on the way. All right, I'm sending the paramedics to help you now. Stay on the line and I'll tell you exactly what to do next. While they are still on the call, the dispatcher is already typing instructions. Those are immediately sent straight to the onboard computer in the sheriff's cruiser. At each desk is a tower of multicolored lights. Red means the dispatcher is talking on the radio to deputies. Yellow means the dispatcher is on a call. Green means the dispatcher is available for a call, and blue means no one is on the phone. When we receive the 911 call, our phone system routes it to a call taker. And in turn, when they answer the phone, it will show information, show the phone number calling, show the approximate location where they're calling from. Uh, it'll give us latitude and longitude. This is their break room, empty most of the time. The dispatchers are so busy, they generally eat at their desks. Is she breathing? A dispatcher, in my opinion, is one of the most difficult jobs there is at the sheriff's office. Um, the people who are working in this room, sit in this room for eight or 12 hours, they don't get to get up and go to half hour lunches or hour lunches. And going to the bathroom, nearly impossible. If they have to go to the restroom, they get up, they run to the restroom, they take a radio with them, and then they come back. What's the address? Veteran 911 operator Patricia Snyder has had more than her share of memorable calls like this one. A mom was choking. My mama can't breathe. Okay, tell her to keep trying to cough. Can you tell her that? Yes. <laughs> Can you try to talk? The child was just incredibly smart and able to follow every direction and able to give her address and because of what she did, we were able to get help to the mother and she actually got a citizen's award. What were you doing here on the property? And remember when we showed you this bloody guy allegedly trying to break into a house? So he's trying to get in the back door? Patricia's relaxed demeanor helped the woman stay calm in the face of danger. What's going through my mind is what can I do to protect the person on the phone? So once she had told me that he could possibly get in the back door, then my first thought is we need to get her somewhere where she's going to be safe, okay? Patricia, who has been an operator for five years, turned detective to help a woman who couldn't talk. She's moaning because she was just shot in the mouth by an unknown assailant. You've been shot in the mouth? Patricia used her knowledge of the city and experience to track her down. So we worked together to find out her location. We spelled street names, I spelled it. Can you see a, can you see a number anywhere, a, a uh, address? Oh, 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 oh. Look around, see if you can see a mailbox. She talked as best she could with yes and no, uh-huh and uh-uh. 
and we did cross streets, we did locations on where things that we were near where she was, what color car she was in. You can only imagine the stress that comes with being a 911 dispatcher. On a scale from 1 to 10, my job, stressful-wise, is about a 10. Haley Kramer's stress level skyrocketed after a woman drove her car into the river. I'm in the river! I can't get out! I can't get out! The woman was trapped in her car. The water was rising fast, and the cell phone signal was dying. I'm floating, but the water is up to my chest. Where are you at, ma'am? I don't know! I don't know! I'm jumping in your car to break your window. I'm so cold! Her car was sinking, um, and then I, the call was about 20 minutes long, and I stayed on the phone until the fire department and the officers had gotten her out of the car. Please stand up. Well, you guys need to watch your back, okay? It might hurt a little bit, but you're going to get cut. Get out of here. I could actually hear the water rescue team getting her out of the car. Another day, another night at the 911 call center. The front line in the war on crime and drugs. So the next time you see the blue and red lights behind you, remember there's a team of dedicated first responders who have your back. So the shift is coming to a close. What'd you make of the night? Uh, it's pretty, uh, you know, no night's typical, but um, really call load was quite low. Um, we did have some, uh, some pretty serious calls. Does it get your your adrenaline running? Absolutely, there's a lot of calls to do, absolutely. Yeah, we didn't need to have any use of uh, this vest, <laughs> thankfully. Absolutely. Right? That would have been an interesting night. And get this, the Sheriff's Department tells us it's not just heroin behind the surge in crime, it's also something they cannot control, the weather. This winter was exceptionally mild in Ohio, and when the weather is nice, deputies say the crooks come out in full force.